man. Mm. Any good? All the time, brother. All the time. We're, uh, everybody seemed to be astonished as to what's going on in America today. I, I was listening to Mother Conky on. I remember when being called a cop was a good thing. She probably remember that too, because a cop simply means citizen on patrol. That's why they call them cops. But I remember when it used to be a good thing. Our kids used to want to grow up and be cops. They still do. Man, I tell you, times are indeed moving toward a close. We are, uh, I hear a lot of things in my life concerning the people of word of deliverance. Some, and I don't, I don't gossip. I don't sit up and pick a talk about somebody today. Most per persons I'm going to talk about is probably going to be my family, my son or my daughter or somebody like that, maybe my best friend sometimes. But one of the things that tr that's really troubling to me is that I did not realize how many people in Word of Deliverance thought that I told God what to put in the Bible. <laughs> I just didn't realize there was that many people in this church that thought that God wrote the Bible so I could tell him what to do. It saddens me, really, when, when I think about how many people in this church think that I make stuff up even when I show them in the Scripture. And when I show them in the Scripture, they somehow fashion it in their minds that it doesn't really apply to humans today. And if I ask them, show me why it doesn't, then they cannot. We live in troubled times. Now, every generation has said that at one point or another. I mean, when rock and roll hit the scene, kids were going to start going crazy. They, they, I mean, they just, oh, rock and roll. And then that Motown sound just messed up the whole community. Uh, we, we was just... You know, every generation, but I, I've seen a few things in the short time that I've been alive, and I've never seen such a mess in my life. I've never seen so many young people that despise God in my life because their parents have taught them how to despise God. And then they wonder what's wrong with the world. You know, you set the house on fire, you do a Nero and wonder why you're burning up. That don't make sense to me. We got all these Harvard graduated liars in the White House, mm. and they haven't quite figured out. They know exactly what the Jesuits and the Catholics and the devil want them to do, and they're doing it. Amen. But we got all these brilliant newscasters and broadcasters and telecasters and YouTube casters. They're just at a loss. They just don't understand how everything that Barack Obama's trying to do just ain't working. Oh, it's working. No, it's working, definitely. Black pastors are scared to say anything negative about Barack Obama. Y'all, I mean, I, I, that's just the truth. They, because they don't want to be looked on as being free thinkers. They don't want to be looked on as being people that have their own mind. They want to be with the collective, you know? Y'all know y'all looking at me like, is he preaching or is he just going to give a speech? Okay, I'm going to go back to what I started off with. For those of you who think I somehow went all the way back and sat down with Moses and said, look, Moses, this is a good place to tell men not to wear dresses. <laughs> hey, let's solidify it by making it an abomination to God. What about that, Mo? <laughs> I don't understand how you expect God to bless you and you keep being disobedient because on, you just think up. because you're a liberal. God got to get on your bandwagon. Uh. That Negro in the pulpit can't tell me I can't wear my Levi's and dress like a man. Uh. Break, break 
Blue jeans, shorts, pants, breeches, women ain't got no business in them. Amen. Oh, but hey, I'm sorry, y'all. I don't want y'all to think I wrote that. But if you're looking, your Bibles is there. Ask somebody that's smarter than me. Because I'm so sure there's a bunch of them in here that's smarter than me that can tell you. There's something wrong when a preacher try to tell a man he got to be a priest in his house. He just don't know how hard hit that woman is. <laughs> that just cannot possibly apply to this situation. <laughs> uh, yes, it does. What do you mean I got to be married to him even though he ain't working? <laughs> even though I'm not living in a five-bedroom house and mm. I can't eat Chateaubriand every, every, every Thursday and... <laughs> And, and, and you know what I'm talking about? I can't have my calzone fixed and brought to bed. I got to stay with him? Yes, sir. I think so. You vowed to. But when it happens to you, it just all of a sudden all bets are off. It's all, all bets are off. only one got to go through that is probably Bishop White, but nobody else. You know, y'all get to be tired. I know God got a tired clause in there somewhere for y'all. And, and the way you could be late because you woke up late. And, and you don't have to come to church because you had something else to do. And, and you don't have to be responsible to your order in the church and let the bishop know when you're leaving. You can just up and go because you don't have to be responsible to him. Because you grown. Is that right? Oh, boy, it's quiet in word. We was just let go, let God out his way a minute ago. <laughs> He's what, what, and he's still wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Maybe I'm going to preach in a minute, but, but y'all don't mind if I talk to you. Well, i tell you what we're going to do. We're going to pray. Can we pray? Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, in the name of Jesus, have mercy upon each of us, Lord, and let your will be done in this place. Continue to prepare us for those things that are to come, O oh God. Let us take heed to the things that we hear. Anoint our ears, O oh Father. Let your will be done in us. In spite of everything else around us, let us never fail to obey you. In Jesus' name, amen. There's this idea that that I listen to. I look, me and my wife, we talk. I mean, She's a smart woman. I, I just tell you, I, I'm just, the older we get, the smarter she, she seems to be to me. That's probably because I'm forgetting so much stuff. You know, she's just amazing to me. And, and we talk, and, and, and we both look at each other in amazement. You could preach, woman, you are supposed to represent the kingdom of heaven. I'm picking on women because women tend to be the most rebellious. That's why God gave them to men. Because men have to learn long suffering on a whole new level. Because why you think women get don't mind getting puff, puffed up in front of you and you six foot something, ah. and she ain't but five foot something, but she thinks she can just get all up in your jail plate when she's mad. Right. There's something wrong with that person. You do know I can crack your skull. <laughs> you know look, your arm this big. <laughs> got all this buffness and you're going to jump, right? So that lets you know women are a new breed of human, man. They, when God made them, boy, he knew what he was doing. They're beautiful creatures. Amen. I mean, you look at that beautiful soft, that soft package he put them in, that soft voice, those beautiful eyes, that smile they could put on you and tilt that head, make you want to go and do something. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, but for some reason, when they get saved, all of a sudden, they lose all sense of what's right for a time. Oh, they'll go this far. But when you start messing with their clothes, dude, it's like you must have lost your mind. They'll give, you the, they'll give the church their money. They'll even come and paint the church. They'll cook chitlins in the midnight hour if it's going to benefit the kingdom. They'll wash cars, watch other folks' hard-haired children. But when you tell them, come out them bridges, what? Oh, yeah, cover your bosoms, what? Lower your hem, what? Cover your back up, what did you say? Wait a minute, uh-uh, hold up. What you mean I can't get my T-boy haircut? Well, according to the Bible, well, no, no, I think you're reading that wrong. Everything else I'm reading is right. 
But when you mess with their clothes and their hair, do it's on. Don't try to tell them they spoiling their children either. When they spoiling their children, cause they'll defend it to the. They'll know that ch child. And, and let me tell you something, women with babies, quit hitting your kids out of anger. Cool off. Get you some Kool Aid, piece of piece of apple pie or something. Let a little time go by. Calmly go get your belt or your switch. Wait till they really into what is that they like to look at? Uh, what is that cartoon Miranda like to look at? Imani like to look at? That that she got one on. Uh, what is that with the flower thing on it? The little cartoon challenge with the flower on it. Sprout. She like to look at that stuff. Wait until they end the sprout and just go to them and say, "Come here, baby." See, the Bible says, what shall separate us from the love of God? <laughs> Remind them how much you love them. I love you so much. Where we going, Mama? Come here, let me show you. <laughs> By the time you get where you're going, before you whoop them, their heart's racing. But you calm. Say, now I'm going to whoop you. Just tell them like that. I'm, I'm getting ready to whoop you. Get up off the floor begging to Jesus. Because he's the one that gave me consent to beat you. So, you know, I'm, I can whoop you on the floor. I can whoop you on the bed or chair, wherever where you want it. But, you know, I, I'm going to chuckle. Ha, I'm going to whoop you. <laughs> and then put it on them. Don't go out afterwards and buy them a cell phone. Don't take them to Dairy Queen because they said, I hate you. Let them say, I hate you. Say, okay, cool. You're going to let that separate you from the love of God. That little whooping. Because, you know, you can't hate me because you're a murderer if you hate me. Teach them. Uh-huh. Your wife don't want to get rid of her britches. They got hefty trash bags. Go through all your, go through your teenager's drawers. You put the drawer, chest of drawer in anyway. It's yours. Dump their clothes out, find the shorts, put them in a the bag, throw them away. I'm in the book. Watch. I'm going to show you how I'm in the book. Somebody want to get an attitude because you can't, they can't go to this. They can't do that. I thought we was going to Six Flags, and they want to walk around like Charlize do sometimes with her mouth poked out. As pretty as she is, she rarely smiles. Like, what's wrong with you? As pretty as, as, as uh, Sakina is, she rarely smiles during service. When praise and testimony going on, she's like, but if you ask us, she's getting her praise on. We asked her the other night. Didn't you say you was getting your praise on? You get your praise on. See, I told y'all I'll put you on blast. Y'all didn't believe me. I said it. Didn't I say it? Who was here when I said it? Didn't I say it? Were you here when I said it? You were here. I said it, didn't I? Let me catch you not praising because you said that you get your praise on. Sister Sunday, too. She said she get her praise on. She get all, didn't, I, didn't you say that? Yes, yeah, sir. Sat right over there. But now all of a sudden, the crowd make you, you know, your praise, you doing that silent praise like you the hit man praiser. You use a silencer on your praise. You know how the hit man do? They put a silencer on their gun. They don't want the devil to, yeah, they want nobody to hear you shoot. We want to hear you shoot the devil. Uh, we want to hear you put the devil under your feet. But but don't let your coolness make you hotness. Don't let your coolness get you heated up. See, y'all didn't know I was going to be in the Bible like this. Y'all want me to go to Psalm or something and just, I'm trying to help you. Huh? Because if you don't get your mind wrapped around the idea that the devil don't love you and that I'm not here because you paying me $13,000 a month, Someone got quiet. Is that what we paying him? <laughs> no, it's not what you paying me. <laughs> Boy, they were so calculated. Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, I'm doing this because I want you to go to glory. God wants you to be ready when the trust. Because I'm going to tell you something. When the persecutors come, all bets are off. When Jesus get ready to come back, it ain't going to be no time to grow your hair. Ain't going to be no time to come out the gym. Wait a minute, Lord, let me take my jeans off. I just went to H-E-B. 
I just, well, I was just mopping the floor, and I can't mop in a skirt. I have to have jeans on, Jesus. But I was listening to the whinings. <laughs> See, I was listening to some praise music, so don't that count? Well, you could be blasting your boom balls almost as loud as Brother Rob does in his truck with gospel. But if you're not obeying God, if you're not walking according to the precepts of God, then you will be left behind trying to buy some oil for your lamp. I'm in the book, ain't I, Brandon? All right. See, now I'm trying to tell you, listen, I know how it is. I'm hard. Other churches don't do what we do. I know. Okay, fine. Okay, but when I'm in glory and I'm watching to look for them other church people you're talking about and they not there, you're going to be looking at me talking about, well, wait, I'm with him. You'll be like, I'm with him. That's Bishop White. I'm with him. And I'm going to look at you like my brother and I'm going to say, depart from me. I don't know you. I'm in the book, ain't I? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help them. See, y'all look at all them people. I was amazed to see how small people are from an elevated view. When I was looking at them people in Dallas with the Black Lives Ignorant People Matter thing, and I saw them people scattering, they looked just like roaches. And I imagine Satan was sitting up there on, uh, on his pinnacle, and he was looking at just laughing. So look at all them roaches. They dummies, too. My servant, Obama, has really got them fooled. My servant Obama has really got him fooled. Wow, he's a good servant. He's divided this nation just like I had uh, the Brits and the Germans doing uh, back in 1902. He did the same thing. It is an amazing thing when you actually know something about history, how to blow your mind. There, this this, these liberals, these socialists in America are doing the same thing the Germans did. The same thing the Catholic Church did in 1902, 1903, and 1904. The same thing. Because they wanted to bring down Britain so Catholicism could take over Britain. Because they hated Protestants. A Protestant is one, is one that goes against the Catholic, dogmatic, devilish, satanic teachings. And lives holy before God. So even if you go against them but you don't live holy, you just lost. See, you, you got the Catholics, then you got the hypocrites, and then you got the holies. Amen. That's it. You got the Catholics, then you got the hypocrites, and then you got the holies. Just that simple. But I, 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 I y'all want some scripture. Okay, go to, with me. Romans chapter 8. Go ahead. Listen, it's important that you understand. Women... I, I look at people when somebody get killed, I notice that women do most of the talking while the husbands sit back. You ever notice that in interviews? The women just run in their mouth. Paul said, I suffer not a woman to teeth. I see what he meant. And these women be talking, trying to sound sophisticated, sound sophisticated, sophisticated, stupid. Y'all with me? Chapter 8. Let's look at uh, verse, uh, 30, verse 30. Moreover. Whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? You may be seated. Now, if you look further along, he'll ask a question Who shall separate us from the love of God? Huh? He said, What what shall separate us? Who shall separate us? Well, we do that pretty good ourselves. Now, the devil likes to use people like Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and, and such to, to start a, This is the worst race-divided nation I've seen since I was a little boy and since I was a young man in the United States Army. But it got this bad because a bunch of smart, ignorant folks decided, let's get a black man in office. Duh. <laughs> Because he's black. Why? He's cool. He walks cool. He's high yellow. <laughs> he clean. He speaks as if he went to Harvard. But he was put there because God allowed Satan to do that. So that he could further divide this nation. It's amazing. You have almost 3,000 murders in Chicago this year. Black on black crime. That's amazing. But they let a police officer 
show his humanity by doing something stupid, like killing an innocent person, whether he's black, white, or yellow. And everybody's up in arms about it in the black neighborhood because it was a black felon that got killed or something. Now, I'm not justifying the killing of any one of those young men. But this is the very reason why Bill Cosby's going through what he's going through. Black folk did not want Bill Cosby telling them to be responsible. They wanted to be victims. And he was telling them to stop being victims. He said, if you'll teach your children to be people of character and ethics, if you'll teach your children to go to work by going to work and showing them, quit beating each other up and quit killing each other, get yourself educated, they didn't want to hear that. So they started scheming so they could find some things out so that they could get Bill Cosby off of the national scene as a positive role model for blacks. Black folk did that. White folk didn't do it. Black folk did that. Oh, yeah, you think about it, Jesse Jackson wanted to castrate Barack Obama. He said it himself. So, so don't sit back thinking because somebody got ribbon before their name that they can't do stupid. And wicked, because they do it all the time. Reverend Wright, good example. Jesse Jackson, good example. Al Sharpton, oh God, the clown of the Northeast. People actually listen to that buffoon. That man is about as saved as a smashed up dollar bill in an elephant doo-doo tank. That's how saved he is. But we look at the scriptures and we say, well, you know, it's supposed to be that way. No, it don't have to, but amen. This stuff is supposed to happen so that we can see the return of our Jesus. Because it was prophesied that these things would come to pass. It was told to us that those that are foreordained, we begin to take on a different hue. We begin to look a different color in the eyes of God. We begin to look like light to God. That's the color God is looking for. He's looking for the color light. He's looking for light, L-I-G-H-T, not L-I-T-E. Huh? He's looking for those that walk the walk of holiness. Those women that say, I'm not going to dress like I used to dress. I'm not going to almost dress holy. I'm going to dress holy. Huh? No, you don't need a burqa on. You don't have to have a hat on. You don't have to dress with a dress dragging the ankles. And you ain't got to dress with layers and layers of clothes and all of that stuff. But you can dress with dignity. You can dress with comeliness and humility about yourself. Everybody ain't got to see how long your split is. Amen. You, a woman ought to be able to do this and pick up a pencil and everybody can't see straight down your clothes. Oh, it's quiet. I ain't just pick. I'm, I'm telling you why I'm bringing this up about women, okay? Because it seems to me like y'all just got this thing about Bishop White being so wrong that you'll look for somebody that you know is wrong just to pretend that you think you're right. We'll go to a church where a woman is supposed to be pastoring with her britches on, walking up and down like that short-haired manly dude on TV. What's her name? That white lady be thinking she's Joyce Meyer. She got such a masculine spirit, I'm surprised her husband allowed in the house on certain days. <laughs> She's got a very masculine, but see, we don't know that. People that don't know God don't know it because you're so used to it. You're used to women being like men. Ain't that right? They go and get their buzz cuts. Have they, what they call in that little bob. Why do you think they call it bob? You, are you that bright that you can't get that? Why don't they call it a Henrietta? Because you look more like Bob now. Amen, that's the truth. God tells you don't cut your hair. Your hair is your glory. He said the woman's hair is a glory like the angels. And, and, and it's not because the angels are feminine, because that's the way God made them. Amen. But we don't want to do right because Bishop White don't know what he's talking about. He, everybody else, look, if your child came home with a big old fat blunt and they 13 years old and they sagging and they got their fruit of the looms on and they, they parents coming to here and they dragging in a 19, 25-year-old hoe with them and they talk about, yo, mom, what's up? You say, what do you think you're doing? Everybody else doing it. Hey, come on now. 
How come I can't do it? This is the fifth uncle you brought home this month. How come I can't do it? I heard the pastor tell you to quit dressing like that. You got short. I can see your butt cheeks, mama. But you you trying to talk about me? Uh-huh. You be ready to kill that kid. Amen. Well, I'm grown. I can do it. Grown ain't going to stop you from burning in hell. Grown is not going to keep you from going to hell. Being a liar is not going to keep you from going to hell just because you disagree with me. I didn't write the book. He said, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, now that's where you got to get your mindset. Say, the reason why I'm going to go this way is because God is for me. And in order to keep God on your side, you need to be on God's side. You need to start being obedient. Even if you don't like it, if it's not as, if I told y'all, come over to the house keg party, back in the day, y'all would have quit your job if you couldn't have got that day off. Keg party, because I had the best Coke. Huh, and it's free barbecue. And he throw good parties. Man, I sure hate I can't go. I can't get off, but I quit then. Uh-huh, yeah. Get mad, too. What you mean I can't? I want to go see the Cowboys. I got free tickets to the game, and you telling me I got to work overtime? Well, I quit then. Really? Oh, it's so quiet in here. He's wonderful, right? Yeah. <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Hallelujah. Put bread on my table. Joy in my day. He's wonderful. So if God be for us, who can be against us? Guess who's your own worst enemy? You. You. Why don't you look at the person next to you and say, I'm not going to be my own worst enemy. I'm going to start obeying Bishop. And I say unto you, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. Okay, so now you got the picture. Now we've examined ourselves, right, to see whether or not we be in the faith. That's what that was about. I wanted you to examine yourself, whether or not you be in the faith. Getting mad, cussing folk out because you mad. So mad is an excuse. I've never read that. So you got a Bible for you. But God is not a respecter of persons. So God don't care if you get mad. And, and look, sniping somebody ain't, ain't holy. You want to get back at somebody. You want to just treat somebody because you got mad. You got hurt. They were wrong. So you're going to just get them. You're going to demean them every opportunity because you can. You need to repent. You need to repent. Just if, see, if you're going to forgive somebody, forgive them. God don't keep forgiving you and say, yeah, but you see what you did. Yeah, I'm going to keep this on you because you keep going. Yeah, uh-huh. God don't do you like that. Well, you quit doing other folks like that. Amen. Amen, Bishop. I'm almost through. Y'all look like y'all want me to shut up. Thank you, sister. See, I'm going to listen to her. She told me to take my time. So here we have these incidents. But we don't want to remember, remember de Blasio telling the people we want the cops to be, what, a uh, 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 hot dog, what do they call them things, weenie roast. They wanted to kill the cops in New York. Yeah, a good cop is a dead cop. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. Let me ask somebody. Somebody break in your house. And you still in there, and your kids in there, but you cannot get to them. And you call, but you can get to your phone. Are you going to call homeboy down the street around the corner because he's your homeboy from the school? Tell him you in trouble? Or are you going to call 911? Uh-huh, you ain't going to call sister girl that make the muffins so good because she knows everything. You know that one sister that knows everything? Everybody just lean on her because she know everything. She 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 the one that's closest to the to the first lady of the church, so she know everything. No, she don't. See, cause so let me call so and so, but they, see see they'll understand because they're more my ethnic background. See, I'm gonna ask Chuck, not Bishop, because Chuck more my ethnic background. I'm gonna ask Brother Celso because he more my ethnic background. Uh, I'm going to get together with the three Mexicans and the Vato, and we're going to have a discussion on the black preacher because they, they understand because of our ethnic background. huh? I guarantee you, ethnic background did not care. It just scattered. When they went down, they, they scattered. 
They weren't checking NAACP membership cards. Okay, you can run. You can run. You can run. They scattered. Pow, 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 pow. Run. Oh, everybody loved the cops then. Oh, they take them teddy bears and flowers. What that's going to do? Give them some bulletproof vests and some harder bullets. Give them your cooperation. Give them your prayers. Give them some respect. Give them some honor. The powers that be, they are ordained of God. If God could put a hypocrite in the White House, why can't he put a righteous man in a police officer's uniform? Amen. He, yeah, who you going to call your house on fire? You going to call the brother that got that new stretchy water hose you saw at the house? The one when you turn the water off and shrink back? Guys ought to not never buy those things. Who you gonna call? Who you gonna call? Barry, Barack Obama would probably run. Probably don't even know how to shoot a gun. He can shoot his mouth, play golf, and try to draw division. So what is God's people supposed to do? Are we supposed to start going along with this junk and say, Black Lives Matter, though. Black, I'm so glad that they, Black Lives Matter is junk. It was junk from the beginning, and it's still junk. Anybody going along with that, you can effectively denote them as being stupid, uninformed, and or just downright ignorant. Every life matters. Because the word of God said, It's not the will of the Lord that any should perish but that all should come unto repentance. That any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. These pastors and these so-called social activists and, and activisms and all of this stuff, these black brothers that walk around talking about, but this is the downright shame. Why don't you go over here on Burnett and knock on these doors and say, can we arrest your crackhead son? Let me get your crackhead daughter in some treatment. So they'll quit rolling around here shooting each other. Huh? That's what you need to do. Quit trying to take the guns out of law-abiding citizens' hands so that these morons can do your bidding. That's why, that's why uh, 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 Hillary don't want people having guns. And they'll say, but we don't mind them having some guns. Yes, you do. Because once you, you've heard it, give them an inch, they want an acre. Give them an acre, they want the whole state. You give them one pig foot, they want the whole pot of menudo. Okay, that would be me. <laughs> I had to say menudo. God, it just messed. Let me go back to the book. I want you to understand something. We're living in terrible times, and you need to teach your children. Sit down and teach them. Sit down and teach them the Constitution of the United States. Frederick Douglass, ba Frederick Bailey Douglass was not a liberal. He was a Republican. See, that's why you don't hear a lot of black folks wanting to invoke Frederick Douglass, because he was a pro-constitutionalist. Frederick Douglass is a former slave. He believed that the Constitution was a valid and just document. The problem he had was that people didn't own up to it. People didn't obey what they wrote. That was the problem he had. He didn't have a problem with the Constitution. Barack Obama is one of the slickest snakes to ever walk in the halls of the White House. And everybody thinks he's cool because they're ignorant. They have no idea. And Hillary, Hillary is not on the president. She's not owed that. She needs to be in the pre She ought to be Hillary number 18635357. Three, three, she ought to have four said numbers. That's how devious that devil is. She don't, and, some, and pot, somebody want to get mad at you because you don't want to vote for that witch, then they say let them be mad. But when, but when she destroys your economy, don't look at me. You blame yourself. Uh, and I don't care if she is a female. That ain't got nothing to do with knowing what's right. I don't have a problem with a female in the White House, but I want somebody that's real. I don't want her to drag that whole monger back in there with her. Why would we want her to take that whole monger back? Yeah, I'm talking politics. Preachers ain't supposed to do that, but you should have told Jesus and John that. Because I work for Jesus. Hello? 
But you need to take keep an eye on things. Quit going along just something on Facebook. Man, did you see that? Did you hear that? Man, they just killing all these black folks. But yeah, you ain't doing nothing to stop it. You just talking about it. You ain't praying. You're not going to church. Huh? You want to you, you want to know why these young women walk around pregnant? Because you taught them how to dress naked. You taught them how to dress naked. You taught them how to put more makeup on than any the five clowns would need. Huh? You let them hang out at everybody's house and pray, and they get to experiment, her girlfriend experimenting with her. And then you wonder why she want to come on top of, I think I'm lesbian. She ain't lesbian. She confused. Hello? Quit buying that little boy Barbies because some scientist in Massachusetts said it's okay. Hello, I'm going to say it again. Quit buying that little boy Barbies because some scientists in Massachusetts said, buy him a little toy gun. Get him a slingshot. Get him some G.I. Joes with extra muscles. Get him one of them stretch Armstrongs. T take him out there camping. Let him get stinky for three days. Uh, let him be hard. Let him know what it's like to have to pull a splinter out of his own hand and say, yeah. Huh? We don't want a little boy. It's okay for a little boy to learn how to cook. All my brothers, all of us know how to cook. Yeah, but but some of the best chefs in the world are men. Ain't nothing wrong with that, but he ain't got to be dainty because he like doing hair. Okay, so what? You got this artwork mentality on people's heads. Fine with me. Good. But you ain't got to talk like you got fine. Your tongue is fine like this. You ain't got to talk like your name ought to be Peggy. Uh, but if you if daddy ain't home, how's he gonna learn how to be a man? All he's watching is mama get dressed, sister get dressed. They always look at that soap operas. After a while, he gonna think he ought to be just like them. Huh? That's why men ought to be in the church. I'm about, can I take your son with me? These single women that ain't that got boys, take that guy. Hey, I'm coming to get your boy. He need to be around men. I'm gonna I'm gonna be Uncle Bishop, Grandpa, Pastor. I don't care. Bring him, drop him off. Hey, Amen. I love kids. I ain't going to do nothing but feed him and get on him and show him and read him something. He might come home wanting to read. might come home speaking real English. Huh? That's right. So if God is on our side, why are we afraid to obey him? If God is for us, why are we afraid to look and walk and act different and live different? Girls going to school, they scared to be different. Well, I don't want to be so different because because I don't want everybody else wears that. And I just, what's wrong with why I got to be so different? So when they go to hell, you want to go because everybody else going to hell. Hell is real. It's real. If you think you're just going to be put in a box and put in the ground, wrong. And something else is coming. Look around you. That movie Earthquake, what was that, San Andreas? They said it was a 9.6. When Jesus come back, it's going to make that look like a cough. Right. <coughs> That's what, he, that, when Jesus returns, it's going to make that look like a cough. Like you just said. <coughs> because when he, it's utter destruction going to follow him. Right. It's time to quit playing around like you really want to be saved and really be saved. Quit faking it. Quit saying, I'm tired, I woke up late. You grown, and you waking up late to go and worship the Almighty, so your children are going to look at you and say, he must not be real. Because I know if it was real, my daddy loves me enough to make sure I'm on time for Sunday school every Sunday because he truly, truly loves me because this God is real. And this God demands of us that we be timely people, that we be responsible adults. Ain't that right? Ain't that right, Brother Eric? Amen. So, Because we can get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and go cut down a tree, but we can't be here at 930 with our kids. This is real. And we want to wonder where our children go wrong. What, 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 I, oh, I took them to church every now and then. Sometimes you were on time. And sometimes you dressed accordingly. Sometimes you actually praised God. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes. What if Jesus looked at you and said, I thought I knew you at one time. How would that feel? Those people running, that broke my heart. This young man killing innocent life, innocent people. 
people doing their job. That's their job. Their job is to protect you and to come to your rescue. They scattered away from the gunshot. The people in blue that they want to kill and castigate ran to the bullets. Yeah, these thugs over here on the east side and the west side wanted to shoot up everybody, killing everybody. How come y'all not protesting them? Why don't you go and put signs in their parents' front yard? Get Jesus, do right. Huh? Why, why aren't y'all protesting that? Um, black Lives Matter, get a life. Quit being stupid because you black. You ain't no strong black woman. You're an ignorant loud mouth that need to get off welfare, get a job, and take your children to Jesus. Was that in that camera or was that, should I did that in this camera? That was in the wrong camera? Did y'all catch it? Black Lives Matters females, mamas. If you'd been right, you'd still had a daddy at home for your hard head children. If you want to do something worthwhile, take your child to Jesus. Check their, their drawers, their backpack. Quit giving that louse money to go buy beer, cigarettes, and drugs, and kick his hoish girlfriend out your house. I love y'all. I say that in love, though. I do. Because, see, if God is on your side, then you ain't got to worry about it. If God is on your side, He's more than the whole world is against you. If God is on your side, you can call on him, and he'll answer. If God is on your side, he'll heal your land. He'll restore that which the canker worm has eaten. But you cannot keep trying to look for excuses not to praise him. Ain't that right, Sakina? It ain't, that's right, am I right? Uh, don't nod. Say it. I want folks to hear you agree. Yes, sir. All right, I'm right. I love her. That's why I miss her. I want her to get be blessed. I want her to be blessed. But we can't be blessed as a people. And this nation is on its way down. You can't help this nation. Oh, you might help in Hamlets and some parts of it, but America is no longer going to be the America it was supposed to be. I don't care who's in office. It's done. The die is set. The only way this nation will be saved is if whoever is the president of the United States this next go-round goes on national television and repents before God and this nation and say and unequivocally mean that this is a nation of Christians and we will have prayer in our public schools and we will restore the Ten Commandments to every courthouse in this nation and every school building in this nation bar none. That's the only way that this nation will be saved. And judgment first begins in the house of God. Check yourself. If you agree with me on that, agree with me on how to dress. Can I get a that's right? Uh-huh, I'm, 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 I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. Is that all right? I'm trying to take my time because we got to have a Lord's Supper. But I want you to understand, this is not a game. I'm not in this for I was preaching this before some of y'all were even born. I'm talking about some of you grown folks. I'm not new to this. I teach teachers. I teach preachers. And I don't teach them just so they can pat me on that back. Y'all never see me on the courthouse, do y'all? On the courthouse steps when they do all that fanfare stuff, day of prayer and all that stuff. Y'all don't see me. They don't call me and invite me. Who oh, no, knew we don't want him? Uh-uh, because he ain't black enough. I am not black enough for the black folk, and I don't speak Spanish fluent enough to be with the, the deep south vatos. I just can't do it, and I'm not politically inclined to take anybody's money because I don't need your money. I know how to cut yards, boiled eggs, and fried chicken. Amen, Amen Bishop. I'm almost through. But we need to understand, see, she's going to mess y'all up. <laughs> hey, y'all here at 530. <laughs> you have to understand something. 
that if I correct you on a thing, it's not because you don't need it. I don't do it just to pick on you. I'm doing it because God is trying to bless your life. And you will not get that blessing if you keep thinking that I'm just saying this and blowing smoke out of the side of my neck. I'm trying to show you that God's ready to bless you, but he's not going to bless you until you give him all of you. You get your praise on for serious. Quit worrying about other folk and quit thinking and pretend, letting the devil tell you, but you're shy. You're shy. You're shy. You just don't feel right, do you, Daddy? You're shy. When the man of God is saying, you're not shy, you just refuse to be obedient. Because God demands your praise. And you don't care what God say. I ain't getting up praising God. Uh-uh, no. I am not going to shout like them folks over there word. Uh-uh. When we go to uh, 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 the church next uh, on, Friday, on, on the fourth Sunday, I bet not see no folks from word sitting down when we're praising God. But I'll come out that pulpit and say, what's wrong? You sick? Bring me some more. Don't test me. I recommend you don't test me. Because you'd be real mad. I can't believe he did that. I ain't no liar. If I told you I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. If her name is Marilyn White, I'll go and do her that way. You sick, baby? Didn't I say something about praising? How come you sitting now? And she'll get swole, too. <laughs> I know my wife. She'll be swole, but she'll take it. You know why? Because she loves God. Amen. She'll take it. And she'll get up and she'll pray. Am I right, baby? And, and like my brother say, my, my friend A.W. say, and I write about it. <laughs> I'm right about it. Here's the sum of it all. You have to understand something. We're living in a dangerous time. People don't even know the difference between a Christian and an Eastern. Everybody look alike. Holy women supposed to be holy, and you in H-E-B in your yoga britches, and you know you about 75 pounds overweight. And you going in your yoga pants, have the nerve to have animal print pants on. And got on a long shirt like that's covering something. All of your wonder is shaking everything. And you want to talk about praise the Lord. Have your praise the Lord shirt on. You need to repent. Huh? You can clean your house with a skirt. A dress is not going to, I've never known a woman to dry of sheer hurtness and pain and, and, and all that because they had on a dress or a skirt and they looked nice. I, I guarantee you every husband in here, is your wife less fine when she come out of her, her, her dress than she was when she had on britches? The britches made her finer when she took them off. She was finer. Ooh, you were so fine, girl. Them britches really made you hot. I guarantee you, she take off the dress, take off britches, she's the same woman. Same woman. Same woman. Only in a dress, she's feminine. In britches, she like you. All she need is her bar. And need you to go ahead and braid your ponytail. You see how backwards the world is? They, 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 it's all about, Obama has drawn a line between, and then he want to pretend like he didn't do this. That's just like a snake. Well, I didn't do it. Yeah, you did do this. The nation is not divided because of me. Yes, it is, you lying wonder. Yes, it is, you're doing just what your, your father, the devil, wants you to do. Please let this get back to him. I really would love for Barack Obama to call me. I really would. Because I'd love to pray for him and hope that he would listen to the truth. Because he's being used by Satan in a great way. It may be too late for him. I think it is. I think it is. His daughters are going to be the bane of his existence. It's sad. Right here in our own city, people just killing each other. Nobody's out on the streets demanding justice for that. But we want to give Black Lives Matter airtime. For what? If black lives matter so much, stop using welfare. Dis, dis, discontinue the use of welfare in America. Shut it down. 
if black lives matter, tell these women you can't kick your man out the house just because he hit you upside the head. And husbands, tell these men that you are married to that woman, you stay your nappy head home. Don't be running to your mama's house because your wife is uncontrollable. Get a hold of Jesus. Get a job. Be consistent. Huh? Hello? Yeah, yeah. That's right. I said popping these women upside the head because there's some women that love being popped upside the head. If they didn't, they'd know how to shut up. You know the man's stupid, ain't got no self-control. Why are you going to run your mouth? It's almost like you saying, well, he's going to be different today. Man ain't got saved yet. <laughs> he's still drunk and stupid. What happened? So you think he ain't going to hit you again today? It's people that come to this church that have husbands that don't mind, that, that, that just, just don't mind popping them. That's sorry. That is just sad. Men calling their wives all kinds of things. That's sorry. So if Black Lives Matter want to do something, they want to help Black Lives Matter, outlaw that junk. Right. Tell them, now you can have your little program, but we're not going to fund you anything. That's a farce. They're using my money to pay for them nuts. I ain't even a member of the NAACP because they don't do nothing but cry. They had a white woman leading them. They didn't even know the white woman was a white woman. Why would I want to give them ignorant and do-nothings my money? That's what they are, a bunch of ignorant do-nothings. They're sleeping giant. They're just like nuclear bombs in a silo in America. It's just sitting there. All that power doing nothing. We need to pray, Brother Eric. We need to pray for this nation. <clears throat> Not that it might be saved but that we might be those that go out and meet Jesus at the harvest. So that we might go out there and get those that are lost and deceived and say, look, there is hope. There is hope in Jesus. There is hope in him. There is hope in Jesus. There is hope in him. Will you come and know Jesus? And if we do that, the remnant will be a bigger cut. So when he comes back, we can all shout together. I mean shout. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about shout. Make the neighbors call the cops kind of shout. I don't mean to be disrespectful. When I say cops, I mean in a respectful way. Because, I, I mean, that's what I grew up hearing, citizens on patrol. But make the neighbors call the police and hey, them folks over there doing something, something ain't right. Go over there talking about, you came to have church with us, Mr. Officer, because we up in here shouting. Right. Ain't that the way it ought to be? Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with shouting in your house. How many of y'all shout so loud the neighbors come and knock on your door? <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that. You know how you put the music out back in the day when you had your barbecue? You know what I'm talking about? You ought to do that with some of these sermons. Yeah. When you outside barbecue, put some sermons outside. Put those speakers outside. Blast the neighbors. You know, blast them with some Brother Rob preaching. Blast them with some Brother Lopez preaching. Blast them with some Brother Johnson preaching. Blast them with some Brother Barnes, White, and Haywood, and Bishop White preaching. Blast them. They come over and say, can you turn that down? Say, no, you need this. Well, we're going to call the police. Fine, because we pray for them. They're on our side. How do we know? Because we got the Lord on our side. Amen. Amen. You know, be encouraged. Don't let this stuff get you down. But change your mentality. And say, Lord, all oh, no, y'all say that with me. Lord, Lord change, my change my perspective so that I, so that I see, things see things the way you do. Way you do. In, your holy name. In your holy name. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. God bless you.